Oh my god, have I got a long episode for you today. This is going to take a lot of work, guys. You might have to watch this video in like two or three shifts because I think there's going to be a lot of information. First off this week, Rishi brought out the budget. So we're going to have to have a very tiny talk about that. But this has got people thinking a lot about tax. And Arpad has asked, how do you do taxes based on 212 tax years coming up? No one else has a video on it. Cheers. So this has got people thinking about how and if they need to pay tax. Then I have a quick talk about FX conversion fees on trading 212 because this has annoyed me a little bit. And then finally, we'll look at my portfolio and we'll see how it's faring against the bond yield crash, as it were. Long show today. Uh, I've got a lot to talk about. Uh, let's get started. I'm amazed how many people own stocks. I'm amazed how many people own stocks. The sucker's going up. Welcome back, everyone. My name's Paul. Now, we've got a long one today. Uh, in front of me on my screen, I've got a lot of tabs open, so that means I'm going to be talking a lot. Don't worry, I won't be offended if you're going to come back and watch this video in lots of small chunks. It messes up the algorithm, but to be honest with you, I know you've only got a limited amount of time on the toilet, really. The big news this week was that Rishi Sunak has released the budget in the UK, and um, to be fair, in my opinion, not a lot happened. Lots of people will try and tell you that there were some secret messages in there, but largely this was like political. The corporate tax rises could cause a bit of a problem in a couple of years, but for us as investors, we were looking to see if there was any changes on the capital gains tax. And to be fair to us, on the recent episode of the Playing Footsie podcast, we called it. We knew there wasn't going to be any capital gains rise. Not for now, anyway. But all this talk about tax has got people asking about how to pay tax and whether they should be paying tax on their stocks and shares. If you're trading your stocks and shares in an ISA like I am on Trading212, then you won't have to worry. Largely, no one pays any tax in an ISA. If you've got a problem, it's going to be in your generalized investment account, GIA. If you've got money in this account and you've earned more than 12.3 in profit this year, and I realize that some people since last March probably have. If you were in tech and Tesla all last year, you probably did exceptionally well. However, there's a possibility that last week that all got wiped out, so you might want to check. Quick reminder right here is that I'm not a financial advisor and anything that I might be saying right now as you're watching this video might be wrong or either out of date. So you need to go out there and you need to figure this out for yourself and you need to check that the tax laws are still the same while you're watching this video. But right now, I'm not going to be charged capital gains tax on any of the stocks that I'm still holding. So anything that I've made like 30, 40, 50% on over the past year, but I haven't sold, they are not liable for tax at the moment. Tax is only applicable on items that you've sold. So if you've traded over the past year, so say you made like 100% on or three, 400% on CCIV, but you sold it at the top, that if it's in a generalized investment account is taxable and you need to think about that. It's taxable if you earned over 12.3K in profit. I'm gonna have to keep going over these things, I think. And on Trading212, it's not hard to find out your total return. So you go to history, and right here in the bottom left-hand corner, it will show you how much you've realized in profit. If this number here is over 12.3K, then you probably owe some tax. You can also get a downloadable version by going to the top right hand corner here. You can set the dates that you want to see. You can include the data that you want it to see, and then you can export a CSV. In that file, it will give you a full detail of all the buys and sells that you've made, and it will make it very easy to figure out how much profit you've realized. So you figure out on Trading212 that your YOLO on Tesla last year made you an absolute ton of money, and you now have a ridiculous amount of money. You've turned one grand into 24 grand. Crazy amounts of money. Well done you, you get a badge. And 23 grand, obviously. Well, not 23 grand because you owe a lot of tax on it. And HMRC have a simple self-assessment tax return checker, uh, which I'll leave a link in the description below for you to get. You simply go through this uh, list of checks and it'll tell you if you need to pay any tax. As ever with the HMRC, this is almost completely useless. 
I've got to question four here and it's reminded me to tell you that dividends on the general investment account are also included. If you earn more than £2,000 in dividends on your general investment account, you will owe tax on that profit as well. Just remember that. Uh, you're probably unlikely to have earned that much on dividends in a GIA uh, if you're watching this video. You're more likely worried about your capital gains right now. Because while this form seems like a great idea for someone who doesn't know a lot about capital gains tax, when you get to question six, it just says, do you need to pay capital gains tax? Dude, this is why I've come here. You should be telling me this. And basically it tells you if you sold any shares, uh, you, you should pay tax. But if this form does churn out that you need to do a self-assessment form, then you need to do a self-assessment tax form. And to be fair to the government, they do make this quite easy. They make it very boring, but it is very easy if you just follow the method. And you can tick number one here just to find out how to send your tax form. HMRC does also have a nice section that tells you how to pay tax. Just search for it on Google or I'll leave the link in the description below for this as well. It is a little bit complicated though, frustratingly complicated, and they use a lot of long and confusing words and it just doesn't seem like, it seems like this could be so much better and so much easier, especially when you're trying to get the message out to people that are selling chairs on Trading 2 and 2. Quite a gamified app if you ask me. And that's another thing you have to remember. While Trading 212 does feel like a little bit of a game sometimes, it feels like a little bit of gambling, feels like a little bit of fun, the money that's in there is real. And the HMRC and Rishi Sunak, they want their slice of that. So you need to remember that. And if you think about it, after all the gains that new investors made last year, you know that the government is going to try its hardest to come for you. So it's very simple. If you traded last year and you bought and sold shares all the time and you made more than 12.3K in profit, then you probably owe tax on that profit. And I reckon while a lot of people who watch this video probably didn't make 12.3K in profit, I bet there's a lot more people who almost did. Now this is important. And if you made like anywhere between five and 10K in profit, then this might be something that you want to consider. If you made 10K in profit last year, first of all, well done you. But if you made 10K last year, then you've probably now done and Kruger yourself into thinking that you're going to make 10K next year. That'll be 20K. And now that is a lot to pay tax on. So while I can never tell you this is what you need to do, I do want you to be aware of something called the bed and breakfast deal. I'll reiterate, this is not something you definitely need to do. This is all going to be based on your personal finances and your personal situation. But a lot of people might not know about bed and breakfasting. Now, bed and breakfasting is a very simple concept, but it's quite hard to explain the benefits. What you're kind of doing is washing your profits clean of tax ready for the next year. So say you've earned £10,000 off Tesla this year. Next year, you expect it to go up another £10,000, don't you? If you don't sell your shares now and you sell them next year, you will be liable for tax for £20,000. However, if you earned your 10K on Tesla this year and you sell it now, you won't be liable for that £10,000 in tax. And then in the new year on April 6th, you can rebuy back Tesla for roughly the same price. And this is all to avoid 10% capital gains tax next year. Does that make sense? I can then buy these Tesla shares back for a similar price on April 6th and my money is now sparkly clean. I won't have to worry about tax then for another year when Tesla doubles again. Oh, Elon making us all this money. But there are a few caveats to this deal. You can't just sell on April 5th and buy on April 6th. It doesn't work like that anymore. So if you kind of qualify for this bed and breakfasting thing, you know you've earned around 5,000 to 10,000 pound in profit this year, then I urge you to go in and have a good read about this thing because it isn't just as simple as selling on April 5th and buying on April 6th. I'm bringing this video to you right now on March 6th because that's about 30 days before April 6th. Unfortunately, the government caught on to this buying and selling thing and now they've put a 30 day limit on it. So if you're going to consider this bed and breakfasting deal for your own shares, then you might want to start thinking about it today. Especially with the huge tech sell off going on, you might just wanna get your Tesla shares out and then uh, rebuy back in when the price is lower. And finally, when it comes to these tax things, just take your time. 
because even though the tax year ends on April 5th, you don't actually have to file anything until January 2022. I think it's January 22. I haven't checked that. That's just off memory. You might want to go check that yourself. But it does give you time between April and January to start learning about tax, learning about self-assessment forms and how to fill one out. If it comes down to it that it's just a bit too confusing for you or you just can't be asked, then there are accountants who are willing to take your money to do this easy work for you. Right, it's like two o'clock in the morning now and I'm about halfway through editing this video. Uh, it looks like I am not going to get anything out on Saturday morning unless I just cut it here. That sucks, but I need to sleep and I feel like I'm going to die. I will get the rest of this video edited and put out tomorrow morning. I'm hoping to get that video out on Sunday morning, just in time for your 9.30 a.m. poop on Sunday. So special poop with Briscoe on Sunday morning. And that video should include a portfolio update and also my views on Trading212, adding the new effects fees, which is pretty annoying, to be honest. Thank you very much for watching this morning, and I'll see you on the video tomorrow. I'm amazed how many people own stocks. I'm amazed how many people own stocks. It's the sucker's going.